Hello everybody, we are back. The Hurricane HQ <coughs> for our official 5.30 p.m. tropical update for August 11th, 2020. And our current news is Invest 95L becomes Tropical Depression 11 as it continues to move west. And make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell so you never miss the next update. And on today's comment of the day is, again, no new comments. You guys, you have to comment because you can get featured on our videos. Just make sure they're related to the video and you'll get featured. So make sure you comment. And you might even get a shout out for your channel. So make sure you comment. Here is our official National Hurricane Center forecast for the Atlantic. And I know everyone's wondering what's going on with Tropical Depression 11. So it has officially formed, and it is, well, I could just say it's, uh, I, I, I'm sorry. It is a newly formed tropical depression. National Hurricane Center is giving it a cone now. And it does show it getting to around 50 miles per hour at its peak. And it does show it slowly weakening into the next five day forecast. And the reason for that is a lot of dry air in this area. And it's very unfavorable over here. But if this storm does get past this big barrier, this big area, which is right here, of dry air and does survive and come out over here it can enhance quite well there's like nothing past this point to stop it it will just continue and will remain a tropical storm or even become a hurricane as it moves up the east coast that is one another way it can go is you could tilt right up this way towards Bermuda most likely it will weaken a lot before it hits Bermuda, but still, Bermuda, we have to watch this. And this, this, is, this is the most likely arrival times of winds, and you could basically see not many people are going to be impacted by these winds until around Saturday, 8 a.m. The Western Tillies, like the northern area, you can be getting those tropical storm force winds around Saturday 8 a.m. to Saturday 8 p.m. and even the very east coast of Puerto Rico might be getting some quite powerful winds around Saturday 8 p.m. and we're going to take a look at our wind speed probabilities for tropical storm force and well they're quite low right now as of now I would say max of around 50%. They're quite low, but most likely we'll see it increase as the system moves northwest. And finally, let's get into our presentation again. Here's our current Atlantic Basin image. And again, sorry about the low resolution, but it's a little bit stretched. Over here... You can see this is our system that we're watching, and this is brought to you by NOAA, and this is our system, and it's starting to turn more northwestward around now, so we could possibly see some impacts around here. And here's our current infrared image, and this is a loop, and as you can see, it is kind of getting a bit more organized as it moves along, and... We're seeing slight intensification, but nothing crazy over the last few hours. Here is our Hurricane HQ forecast for Trouble Depression 11. And I would say it has two different areas it can impact. I believe it will either head this way and generally move up the east coast. Will it hit the actual coast and have major impacts? Yes, will it save far out to sea? Maybe, we'll have to see. If it does take this track, this track is not exactly where it head. 
This other track is another representation of where it can go. And I would say anywhere from here, this area, all the way to the east coast is possible. And I believe Bermuda, you're in a very bad location right now for the storm. You're in a very bad location, but you possibly might dodge the storm. We'll have to watch this, especially for the east coast. And I'm not sure about any impacts in the Dominican Republic, Bahamas, but that is definitely possible. This entire east coast and even southeast possible. We're not ruling any of that out. And here's our average forecast tracks for August. And you can see our system was kind of around here. It may head this way, but it's kind of unlikely. Most likely to head this way. Either up the east coast, maybe up towards Bermuda, and maybe into Florida. And now we're going to take a look at our travel tidbits forecasts. Here's our global hurricane models, and these have been changing a lot, but most of them now are making it continue over the Dominican Republic and not make that curve suddenly by Puerto Rico. Although a few do come right out of this line, and most likely it's going to head over here. This is like very well agreed. But once it gets past here, it can go anywhere where these models show it. And it's really full of unknowns. Here's our GFS. And the GFS shows most of them actually heading out to sea. Only a few of them actually continue this way. Some of them even hit the Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic, but... A lot of them show it heading right out to sea and possibly even affecting Bermuda. And I'm not sure what's up here. I believe. All right, I believe this CMC assemblies are currently in the works and are unavailable. But here is our intensity guidance model at 18Z, and a lot of these models do show it hitting tropical storm status and a few of them actually get kind of into the center of tropical storm and one of them brings it to category one status which i do believe is possible let's take a look at um, zero z and another error sorry about that and this is most likely not going to work well this is our intensity guidance model. All of all the models are, for some reason, either in the works or unavailable right now, which I think is strange. And here's our infrared satellite. I believe this is infrared plus. That shows the color. Quite warm over here. Uh, so as you can see, it is moving northwestward now. It's no longer moving straight west, so it's starting to make that turn already. And the current pressure, it says, is 1,007 millibars. This is the minimum central pressure. The environmental pressure is around 1,011 millibars. And the radius of circulation is 150 Nm. And the radius of maximum winds is 60 Nm. And again, we will have to watch this system. Here's our windy forecast. And it's still, you can see that eye is becoming a bit more defined. Although this looks like more of a defined eye, and this area is like a secondary part of the eye. I'm not totally sure. But it is categorized as a tropical depression. And we will have to continue watching this because this has potentially become major. All of the last storms were battling a lot of wind shear, a lot of dry air. They were battling sinking air, I believe. Or was it dry? I'm not totally. I'm not totally sure about that. I'll have to check that. But almost everything that can be working against them was, except with, except the sea surface temperatures. And they still plowed through all the wind shear and all of the dry air and all the Saharan dust in the air, so I guess 
systems are becoming a bit stronger in a sense because they are plowing through all these things that we would assume is destroying them. And if you're wondering what this system is, this is actually a Category 2 hurricane. We can take a look at that. Here's the official NOAA forecasts for the Eastern Pacific. This is Elda or Iwidi. I'm not, I'm not totally sure how to pronounce that, but it's currently a Category 2, I believe. I believe it's a Category 2, but it's most likely either has already weakened or is going to weaken to a Category 1 hurricane in the next hour or two. And it's most likely not going to affect land at all. And there is not even an extended 5-day forecast because it's most likely going to die off by 11 p.m. Tuesday. Thursday, sorry. And again, these winds, arrival times of winds, is most likely. And they're not going to affect anything. Like, you can't even see any islands in this area. So, I don't think anyone has anything to worry about with this system. Unless it dramatically changes course, which is unlikely. Or you sail boats in the, in the Pacific Ocean. I'm not totally sure, but... I believe it doesn't have any impacts to land. And here's our wind shear map, which I was bringing up earlier. And see this area of wind shear? And so is over here. It's going to be going right through this area of wind shear, and that will probably start to tear it up a little bit. Maybe make it less organized. And let's see if we can get that here. Atmospheric, mo atmospheric moisture map. And as you can see, it is quite dry in some of these areas. This entire area is very dry, and if it can survive this, if it does get through here, it will have a lot of things working for it in its favor. For example, very low amounts of wind shear, very moist air, and really nothing really to worry about out there. So if it does actually get through this area of dry air, that is going to be something to really watch because it has a lot of potential to become something major. And actually, this is a good tropical intensity index. Uh, one second. And it shows this entire area is highly unfavorable. But once it gets through here, it has all of this favorable warm water with nothing against it. And it could develop quite quickly. Kind of like Asaias. Which recently hit the entire eastern seaboard. And other than that, there's not much going on in the tropics. Um, there's a few things in the Pacific Ocean... I believe, but nothing really to worry about. There's one possible development area. It has a 70% chance of developing, but most likely nothing to worry about yet. And I guess I'm going to wrap up the video here. Thank you all for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell. And today's question... Write in the comments below, do you think this system will become a hurricane, or even a major hurricane? And forgetting that, will it even survive that highly unfavorable area? Leave that in the comments below, and you might get featured on our next video. And also, if there's anything we can do to make the videos better, the channel better, please also comment that below. Well, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.